silencers as regulatory sequences influencing transcription in eukaryotes as the word suggests these cis elements are responsible for repressing transcription so let us look at the learning outcomes of the session so silencers come under the category of either distal or proximal regulatory cis elements that are able to decrease transcription activity so they are complete opposites of enhancers silencers are elements directing either active or passive repression mechanism transcription factors binding to the silencers are able to mediate the repression mechanism by several different ways and many a times based on these different ways uh, based on this mechanism per se they can be there can be subclasses of silencers and silencers may interact synergistically so you may have more than one silencer which are effectively working on uh, repressing the same uh, transcription of the same gene that is also possible or they may just modify the repression mechanism so how do or uh, in what way does the silencers kind of function so what has been observed is that the silencers also function very similar to way to the way enhancers do so suppose this is a gene of interest and uh, you have a promoter upstream of it uh from where the transcription uh, begins so you have a transcription start site present in the promoter element and say so distal upstream of the promoter region is a sequence now this sequence can bind to a protein or a complex and uh, because this is going to affect the transcription per se they are also called as transcription factors so when you have this element bound to the transcription factor and its binding to the transcription machinery is such that the transcription machinery is not able to properly bind to the promoter uh, region or the or there is uh, probably uh, you know affect such that the mediator is not properly bound to the uh, transcription machinery or the rna polymerase is not positioned properly or the tf2h is not positioned properly and so therefore transcription initiation does not happen or what happens is there is a decrease in the transcription so therefore you can basically look at the fact that just like enhancers silencers too are able to you know work from a distal area and again what you see is very clearly something that is uh, called as a dna looping so for its functioning you have to have the uh, co repressor or the repressor Uh, actually binding to the transcription machinery so it is either directly going to mediate or it is going to mediate through another repressor molecule so that is also possible now the silencer sequence is important many studies have shown that if there are mutations in the silencer region that is if the element cis element changes there is one or two nucleotides that have become different then it has been shown to be uh, So, uh, it has shown to affect the repression and you would again have increase in transcription now they can be present upstream or they can be present downstream so uh, effectively what is understood is that position does not matter it can be present either uh, upstream of the promoter region or it can be present downstream of the promoter region it can interact with transcription factors or mediators etc to modify the transcription machinery efficiency or binding to the promoter sequence some silencers can be tissue specific while some silencers can be constitutive that is they can be expressed in all cell types and these can be uh, working only in certain tissues so let us look at when silencers were discovered they were basically uh those silencers that were present upstream and could repress the regulation or could repress the transcription at the initia initiation stage so such silencers were called as classical silencers and interestingly having studied uh, these silencer elements in many genes they found that they share a common sequence uh, of ct 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 many genes have this 
so they basically pointed out that this could be a universal sin silencer element uh, that could affect the expression of genes however what has been observed is that there are many variable different types of uh, uh, sequences present in different silencers while some silencer elements are found just upstream of the proximal promoter elements so they are exactly overlapping or just upstream of the promoter proximal elements in such a case we can consider that such silencers are position dependent silencers if you remove them from that position and place them in any other position they are not able to silence the transcription so uh, in fact what was observed is that the silencing can be passive repression so let us understand what is passive repression is say for example you have the uh, silencer region present just upstream of the gc box now because you have the silencer region present over here or the silencer element present over here you have a x transcription factor coming and binding and because it is bound it is physically impossible for the transcription factor for the gc box to come and bind to the gc box so therefore this is called as passive repression that is it is not actually affecting the uh, binding of the transcription machinery to the um, uh, promoter region and so directly it is not uh, inhibiting transcription or repressing transcription but because it does not allow a uh, you know a, an activator to come and bind to a promoter proximal region thereby it is influencing the transcription so such is what is called as passive repression and you can also see that because it is present just upstream of the gc box it is able to carry out this function so therefore such a silencer would be a position dependent silencer if you place this silencer a few ba base pairs upstream then it would not have the same effect but you can also have active repression an active repression is when you have the silencer element that binds to a core repressor and that core repressor binds to the transcription machinery and because it binds to the transcription machinery it is not positioning or probably not activating factors and therefore uh, silencing or therefore preventing the starting of the uh, initiation of the transcription per se and hence transcription does not take place so this when it is directly involved with the transcription machinery itself is what is called as active repression now what has been found is that many silencer uh, elements are also found within introns so what is observed is that the transcription machinery may be bound to the promoter sequence okay just upstream of course it will obvious obviously bind to the promoter region upstream of the gene of interest and this gene this gene that it is going to transcribe has introns and suppose within the intron there is a silencer then what can happen is that you can have the transcription factor come and bind to the silencer region now when this comes and binds to the uh, uh, silencer region it kind of acts as a barrier for the uh, transcription machinery so even if it begins transcription okay because of the presence of this uh, repressor due to its being uh, ability to bind to the silencer element there is going to be a block in the elongation but the other way is that it binds to a core repressor and that core repressor directly binds to the transcription machinery in that scenario it will not even initiate allow initiation of transcription to happen so therefore intron silencers can function this way now you can also have a silencer you know much more downstream in such a case you will find the looping of the dna happening and uh, the core repressor coming and binding to the transcription machinery so either ways it is able to uh, silence the transcription of its own uh, gene now for example you have a 199 190 base pair fragment that is present in the first intron of the human cd4 gene and this fragment is able to repress the promoter activity 
of the CD4 gene in CD4 cells but not in the CD8 cells. So therefore you can also understand that it is tissue specific. So many intron silencers are able to silence the gene or silence the transcription of the gene in a particular tissue or in a particular cell type itself. Another example is a pair of hepatic cell specific silencers. So they have been localized in the first intron of the human apolipoprotein A2 gene and this is being, uh, I mean the transcription of this human apolipoprotein A2 gene is being repressed by the pair of the hepatic cell specific silencers binding to similar factors and those similar factors affecting the transcription machinery. So here this is also an example of what is called a synergy. You have two silencer present within an intron, okay, and both the silencers together, the pair of silencers together are able to <coughs> repress the transcription. So here again, you can see that it is tissue specific, and you can also see that there is a synergistic effect. Both, lead, both of the silencers are uh, affecting uh, the transcription machinery in such a way that transcription becomes minimal. Interestingly, many retrotransposons, so you all, we all know that retrotransposons are genetic mobile elements. So many of the uh, retrotransposons can also act as transcription silencers. So we'll look at some examples. In the human growth hormone locus, which has the genes for human growth hormone 1 and human growth hormone 2, it has been found that in this loca locus, there are present 44 allu repeats. So they are transposons. Out of these 44 allu repeats, one of the allu, re allu uh, repeat is regulatory. And it mediates the decrease in the histone acetylation of the nucleosomes that are present in the promoter region. Because histones do not get acetylated, Okay, you don't have the open chromatin and because you don't have the open chromatin at the promoter region, the promoter itself becomes inaccessible to the transcription machinery and therefore transcription will not flow. Now, in this case, one has been able to understand the mechanism, but in case of many retrotransposomes, the mechanism of those that work as transcriptional silences, the mechanism is still unclear. Let's look at another example. In the distal part of uh, human BRCA gene promoter is present an allu element. And this allu element uh, is responsible for negative regulation of the BRCA expression only in breast cell lines. So therefore, indicative of the fact that it is highly tissue specific. So in either cases, whether it is here or here, what is clear is that an allu element is acting as a silencer and allu elements are part of transposons. So with that, let's make the conclu conclusions. Silencers can be position dependent or it can be positioned independent in the repression mechanism. These silencer elements can be present upstream, downstream, within introns or exons or 5' UTR regions of the transcription unit. These cis elements bind to transcription factors. And with or without co-repressors are able to modify the interaction of the transcription machinery with the promoters and thereby repressing transcription initiation. So this is what is understood by active repression. Several retrotransposons have been identified to be transcription silencers. Therefore, silencers are cis elements that may be proximal or distal, position dependent or independent, orientation dependent or independent, tissue specific or constitutive, passive or active transcription repressor elements. Thank you.